Welcome to The Lift. For the past three weeks, we've been talking about being rooted where God wants us to. And we've talked about James chapters 1, 2, and 3. Today, we're going to start on James chapter 4. And in James chapter 4, we learn all about what it means to compare yourselves to others and also what it can mean for you to be a friend of the world. In the beginning of James chapter 4, James talks about why we have fights with other people. He says, you're looking at everybody around you and you want what they what they have and you're not focused on what God wants for you. You're just focused on taking what other people have so that you look better. And we talked about that a little bit last week. We talked about that during our Destined for Darkness series. But we need to remember we can't just focus on other people. We need to focus on what God wants from our lives not what other people around us have or even what other people around us want for our lives. Here's what he says. He calls us adulterers. And it, what he's saying is you say that you love God, but then you're loving the world. And that can't be the truth. Both of those things can't be true. Either you love God or you love the world. Because he says, if you are a friend of the world, you are an enemy of God. But he makes a good point here. He says, the reason you don't have what you want is because you don't ask God for it. And then he says, and even when you do ask, your motives are all wrong in asking. Think about what it means for God to be in control versus God taking control. Just last week, I was listening to a sermon by the lead pastor of Elevation Church. And if just as a side note, if you're looking for some good music to listen to, listen to Elevation Worship. But he was talking about the difference between God being in control and God taking control. And so many of us want God to take control, but we don't want God to be in control. Here's what he said. He said, when our finances are out of order, we want God to take control of that situation. But when the time came for us to think about how to spend our money, we don't want God to be in control. Or when that relationship is going really wrong, we want God to take control, even though it's a relationship we shouldn't be in in the first place, and even though it wasn't His plan for us, we want God to be to take control, not to be in control. And that's exactly what James is talking about here. He's saying, you want all of these things, but your motives are completely wrong. You want God to just take control and give you everything you want because that's what you want. And you're looking at all these people around you who have it and you don't. And so you're just trying to get what they have so that you look as good as they do to everyone else around you here on this world. But it doesn't matter. What James is trying to say here is that when we pray, we need to say, God, Whatever it is that you want with my life, that's what I want to happen. And God, I will do my part. I will do everything I can to live that way. Just show me what it is you want. If we will do that, then we won't be a friend of this world. We'll be a friend of God's. We won't be his enemy. And we won't be focused on all the things around us that might distract us, but we'll be focused on what he wants from our lives. And if we, if we can really grasp that, then when we pray, our prayers will be answered with a resounding yes. Because it won't just be us praying for things that we want, it'll be praying for the things that we know God already wants for us. And when we can understand that, then we can become rooted more and more and we can receive more and more of his blessing and we can receive more and more of what he really wants in our lives. And when we do that, we find out what life is really all about. This is The Lift. Hey guys, Brad Marley here with your workout tip of the day. That's my dog right there. Don't mind her, she won't move. Um, I want to show you, uh, this is a kettlebell. And I want to show you something called the goblet squat. And this is, in my opinion, the absolute best way to increase your hip mobility. Um, it's going to help your squat, your deadlift, um, how you move uh, in general with your hips. Do it just like this. Keep your knees far apart um, and use a kettlebell um, or a dumbbell if you'd like. Um, and just hold it in the front. It's really going to sink your hips low and it's, it does wonders for your hips. That's your workout tip of the day. Strength is more than muscles. This is The Lift.